So hi to everyone. Um, I will be talking on the IOX projects. Uh, th this community is actually based on the projects uh, and it consists of every person related to the IO in some way. I basically call the activity around the IO uh, an IOX project, any, any activity. And, um, not um, so. What it means is that we come together to propose and discuss an idea. Uh, if this idea brings interest of some of the people in the community, it might kick off. To help your idea to start, it would be best to find some like minded people in advance. And those would be the ones who speak up their interest, like you did when you came here. I can tell you the story of how it started to give you an idea of what will happen and how it worked. So uh, I was born in 1988. And, well, no, uh, we have found out that many of our contestants said that their brightest emotions were based on the event itself. We have had so many interesting things like you know, a special um, 3D photo booth with a photographs being made from all around and um, a couple of people could stand there. Uh, actually, uh, there are remaining photos, uh, but I couldn't share those now. Uh, you know, it looked like in Matrix, uh, when uh, in the scene, when if you watched and remember this, uh, Neo was falling from the bullets flying, and he was from shown from different angles, and it was just great. Uh, or the guitar nights in St. Petersburg, when flames were projected on the walls and it was a, uh, a very old mansion and we sing, sung songs, just amazing. Um, and those emotions will last forever um, alongside with awards experience with your hard work to prepare for the IO. And well, we wanted to give those of you who plan to have some influence on the world um, an opportunity to be in contact with some same-minded people, not only uh, having those memories, but also with some experience and joint creation of some value to each other. To have not a full number, but lasting contacts. Um, so we talked, I talked to Yulia, let's keep on and get people in some activities. She agreed. We talked to Germana here. Let's use your extraordinary experience in creation of Olympias and provide more people with an ability to participate. And he agreed. And this is how the open track happened. And I talked to alumni and Christus Banas. Well, he couldn't come. He's a jury member now. Um, I said, let's create some tasks ourselves. And they agreed. And those mm -hmm. tasks were amazing, interesting. They have helped with creation of tasks for the winter challenge to a whole team of 21 person from 11 or so countries. I have tried to solve those tasks actually. Um, it was not so easy. <laughs> I was below the average in my final points. I think all of you would be higher, <laughs> but still, uh, I'm not an economist. Uh, and well, I have learned about the survival bias, um, how it is implemented in real life. One of the tasks was about the airplanes uh, which survived in war. And um, some of those were depicted where the bullets came through. And uh, on, by, on, by, on this basis, you should uh, be deciding uh, where to put the uh, defensive shield. Well, and I dropped into the bias to, of thinking that, well, I don't see uh, the uh, bullets uh, in where the uh, the actual pilot sits, so uh, it shouldn't be protected. It's not, it doesn't need the protection, but well, that was a survival bias. Only those planes uh, which were not hit uh, well, through through the person <laughs> operating the plane were came in back, coming back. Uh, so, well, this project actually became my second family. I adore people in here. I know that we can create amazing things. And some of those came to be paid as well, but were made from scratch without any money involved. 
So what we have done and what we have worked will be presented here today by the people involved in those projects. Um, there will be five of those, Toastmasters, Fundraising, Winter Challenge, Open Track, uh, and the Sage Challenge. So now please welcome the first most warm person we have, Yulia, with a presentation on the Buddies Project and the Toastmasters meetings uh, that we invite you all to participate in. Yulia, you've got the floor. Mm -hmm. So I believe I can speak now because me and Alexander are actually in one room and in order for us to speak, we have to turn off our sounds on our computers so that we don't scare you with the like, corridor of sounds reflecting back from each other's computers, I guess. So yeah, Alexander told you a little bit about how we started. Hello, Sebastian. Oh, I'm sorry, this was a private message. Um, so hello. Um, I will not be looking in the chat right now. Um, so we started thinking, how do we create something that is sustainable? How we create something that not only works once a year, but works throughout the year, um, regardless of the time. And one of the first ideas I believe was to create a buddy system. Uh, it was introduced by our friends, um, our colleague, I guess, from Switzerland, Thomas, introduced the system to us. And buddy system is usually what people use uh, in companies or educational organizations. So when the newcomers enroll into the organization, uh, they are assigned like an older buddy who explains to them how things work, who guides them, who helps them through the initial stage of getting into the company or the program or anything else what have you um so we decided to do that we did actually two additions with slight changes between that and what we were doing uh, was we were attracting people then putting them into pairs like pairing them up and uh, asking them to think of the goals they want to reach in their near future and asking them to help each other with that so we would uh, propose to them to have calls, like weekly calls, bi-weekly calls, and uh, tell each other about the, their progress. And we thought that this way we would like bind people together. Um, people would actually become friends and help each other through some situations in, in their lives. Um, and they did. Some of them did. Well, most of them did not finish the program. Uh, that was unfortunate, but it was still a success because even if 30 people enroll and in the end you have like eight people who made something out of the program, it's still good. It's amazing. You still make the change. It feels nice. Um, but then after the initial, the first program, we decided that we needed to add something to that. So we needed to add some lectures. We needed to add some guidance from our side. Um, we needed to add some more activities for people to communicate even outside of their pairs. And that's why we introduced Toastmasters to the body system. And actually what happened was that Toastmasters was the most successful thing out of all of the activities we had in the body system. And that's why I'm gonna be telling you about the Toastmasters a little later today. But now I would like to ask Sahil to join us uh, because Sahil was actually a member of the second edition of the IEO budget system, and he was the successful one. He was the one who went through the whole thing. Um, he also looks like he enjoyed it. That's why he, we invited him. So Sahil, could you please tell us a couple of words about what the budget system brought into your life? Yeah, hello. hello, everyone. I'm Salsa from Nepal. I was a part of the second edition body system by IUX. And the reason I joined this body system was to uh, achieve my goals effectively and improve my communication skill through Toastmaster and to meet and network with the people from different part of the world. So during this time, my goal was to uh, like prepare for my examination, learn about data analytics and read a uh, few books. So my buddy Alexander, uh, he, he's a really productive guy. He suggested me a lot of tips and suggestions uh, to how to plan goals and how to effectively achieve them. And, and as a part of this, I started writing Google Calendar uh, for scheduling my talks and for the time management, 
and it worked really well. And I'm thanking Alexander for suggesting that. And, and regarding the Toastmaster, uh, we had like Toastmaster meeting every fortnight. And in that we, uh, we used to get some topics uh, to tell about uh, the countries, about your home country's tradition and culture. And we used to present it. And through this, we got to know about each other countries, what the similarities are, what the differences are. Uh, and it was really amazing doing that. And we also had evaluator who used to uh, give the review the speeches and give the suggestion how to improve it next time. And through this, yeah, I, I, I guess I, could, I improved uh, quite a bit about this thing. And after that, after Toastmaster thing, we also had, we also discussed about some topics and it was really fun part discussing over it. Okay, uh, overall, it was really nice experience being part of this. And I'm thanking Yulia, Anna and Alexander for organizing this thing. Uh, thanks a lot for that. Thank you very much, Sahil. Thank you for joining us. It's, it's really nice to see you here during the IO. Um, so now I guess it's time to move on to our future project. So I told you about the budget system and I told you that it kind of merged into uh, the Toastmasters. We just left one best part. Uh, and what's it gonna be? I'm gonna explain to you right now. So I'm hoping that you can see my screen. And if you do, can you like send pluses to the chat or something? Mm -hmm. Thank you, Alexander. So Toastmasters IEO style. We are gonna meet, what? Oh yeah, and Pat, could you please, uh, after I finish my speech, could you please give me some feedback on that? Would you be able to do so? Perfect, thank you. I'm seeing you now. So we're gonna meet every two weeks, first and third Sunday of the month. It can switch, but I mean, we can discuss everything as we go. Why do we need the Toastmasters? And what is the Toastmasters in general? So Toastmasters is meant to improve your public speaking skills, to give you more confidence for presenting, to not teach you how to basically speak in front of people. And it's very interesting because sometimes you think that you can speak well, but then you meet 15, like you're, um, and that's why, oh my God, I'm so sorry, I'm nervous but I won't be after I attend a couple more meetings of the Toastmasters. Uh, so, but when you're presented with the audience of 15 people from all around the world and you don't know them and you see them for the first time and you're constantly thinking, are they gonna judge me? How will I do? Well, right now I've just made a couple of mistakes like a minute ago, I don't care, I'm fine. Um, that's what the Toastmasters taught me so far. So the advantages of the Toastmasters, you can see on the screen, and it's basically to learn to speak off the cuff, to put together and deliver speech on any given topic, uh, to uh, learn how to support people while giving them feedback, and then to learn about each other and about other cultures. So what we did in the Toastmasters during the body system, uh, we put the focus on different cultures, and we asked everybody to tell something about their countries, their nations, their traditions, and God, was that interesting. Um, and also, it was uh, very educative in a way that we all understand that our cultures are different. We may not know how exactly they differ, but we kind of get the idea. But it's rare when you realize uh, that they're actually same in a lot of ways. That's what the Toastmasters taught me too. And that's astounding for me. So now a couple of questions about the Toastmasters. How long do meetings run for? Well, it's usually one hour. Could be more if everybody agrees, could be less, but no, please don't expect shorter meetings. We don't do that here at the IEO. Then how long does a speech run for? Typically five minutes, um, could be a little shorter, but no longer. Then do I choose what the topic of my speech will be? Yeah, of course, you can choose whatever it is you want to talk about, but we can also do some, make some frameworks for the presentation so we can give like a general topic and ask you to tell us about some aspects of it. And we can challenge you to do, make a speech on whatever we wish. We will choose that too. Uh, can you use visual aids? Uh, of course you can, you can also go without them. 
both options are valid, you can choose. Then finally, what is the structure of the meeting? So every Toastmasters meeting consists of basically two parts. The first one would be speeches or presentations. And the second one is a conversation or discussion. And uh, the meetings are usually divided in halves. So the same time is allocated for each aspect. Also at the Toastmasters, every person has their own role and the role is assigned uh, before each meeting. So the roles rotate. Every meeting you will have a different role. And those roles you can see in, this, in the slide below. Um, and I will just say a few words about each of them. So the chairperson, it's the most important person at the meeting. They coordinate the event, make sure that people come and the topics of their presentations do not collide with, with each other so that they don't do make the presentation on the same topic. But also, it could be that um, chairperson has to judge for themselves if the topics are good with each other. Uh, and then also the chairperson keeps track of time and structure of the meeting. Then let's move on to the speakers. So when you are assigned to being a speaker, you need to find a topic worth sharing, anything that you want to talk about or anything that people have challenged you to talk about. You create the presentation. Uh, and then you deliver the speech for five minutes. But before delivering the speech, while you are preparing it, you can get some guidance from your evaluator. So usually uh, the speakers and evaluators are assigned in pairs. So we have a speaker and an evaluator connected to them. Evaluator gets in contact with the speaker in advance. Then uh, the evaluator offers um, to help with choosing the topic, helping to um, like rehearse the presentation, anything that the speaker might need. Then the evaluator listens to the presentation and offers constructive and positive feedback on uh, different aspects of the speech. And we will also, also provide the guidelines to that. Finally, there is the topics master. And I believe it's one of the, one of the greatest roles that you might have. So the topic master, uh, is responsible for asking people questions. You can choose any question you want to talk about and you can basically incite the discussion of the topics that are interesting for you. And that's when people actually speak, when they sometimes argue, sometimes agree. And that's basically the second part of each meeting. So finally, we have a grammarian. A grammarian has to listen to everything that is being said during the meeting and then give their feedback on the grammar or the language being used and say like a few nice things. We are only saying nice things here. Um, so with all of that, I think that the structure is clear. If you have any questions, you're very welcome to ask them. And if you're interested, just contact me personally or write to info at acolim.org. And when we start this project, we will invite you to join. Thank you very much. So, Pat, would you like to say a few nice words about me now? I certainly would. Um, Julia, uh, congratulations. This is the fifth uh, speech that I've seen you uh, perform. And with each one, you always, you're improving all of the time. I loved uh, your vocal variety. I thought it was really strong. It emphasized uh, what you were saying. I thought you were very bubbly. And I think your personality, your warm, very warm personality uh, shone true. Um, I loved your humor. Uh, you, met, you smiled a bit, a good bit actually. And you had, you even managed to get hand gestures in, which was very impressive. I feel that uh, today, you, you're, I think your tone is always perfect. I, I feel that today you were a bit slightly nervous. So I think uh, slow just a small bit. Um, but otherwise, I thought it was really, really slick. Uh, just one thing to correct, maybe. Uh, if Alex is doing a speech, it's never five minutes. And it's never below it either. Uh, <laughs> um, but I, I loved it, and uh, Julia, I look forward to 
to continuing uh, with that later in the year as well. And can I just uh, compliment Sahil as well? I love Sahil's English, and I love the way he said that Alex taught him to do own goals. I thought that was fantastic as well. <laughs> so anyway, uh, thanks, guys. Well done, Julia, and I look forward to your next speech. Thank, Thank you. you very much, Beth. What Beth did here right now was he performed the role of the evaluator. And I think that you should join our Toastmasters just to hear this many things about yourself. Thank you very much. Uh, with that, I'm going to be giving the stage to my colleagues. You're welcome. Yeah, thank you, Yulia. That was great. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, it's great to see you all again. Um, so the IEO wanted to create the fundraising project for some some while now, and uh, finally it was created. Uh, so this is a fairly new project. It started on the 7th of June and consists of only 14 members, including the organizing team, which is like four members. Uh, the goals of this project are basically to try your best and raise some funds, money, either for the IEO or the team salary. Uh, overall, the fundraising project consists of four sections, the legal entity creation, uh, crowdfunding, documentation, and research on large companies and sponsors. Uh, this project is for people who want to test their abilities and who are interested in raising money. So basically it is for anybody who is interested and is ready to put the time and effort into the project. Uh, now I'll try to do a demonstration. So uh, we worked in ClickUp, which is what you can see on the screen now. Uh, here you have the four uh, compounds, the legal entity creation, uh, crowdfunding documentation, and research on sponsors. Uh, each of the team members picked tasks they liked from different sections and uh, worked on them, started working on them as a team. Uh, all of the documents that are, were created in the process are stored in one place. It is the collective Google disk, which is in our group chat. Uh, also, each week we hold a meeting where we discuss each of the team members' process and progress so far, ask questions, uh, ask for help or suggestions, and uh, if needed, get feedback on your work. Uh, so if you'd like to join, then you can find me on WhatsApp or Telegram uh, and message me. I will uh, invite you to our group, and there you can learn more about the process of the fundraising team. Uh, now I'd like to give word to Margarita Shevtsova, who is a participant of the fundraising project, and she'll tell you about how's it going for her and what is her experience. So Margot, if you are ready. Oh, hello. Uh, I, as Anna has introduced me, I'm Margot. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say is that my team participated in the Iowa X challenge and we got the second place uh, in the business case finals. So what was the business case? It was how to uh, collect uh, the endowment for the Iowa. How can, well, how can you raise money? Well, that sounds pretty straightforward. We have all done business cases. So well, we did some research and we decided that here is the list of companies which uh, are most likely to give us money. And here is the amount that uh, we will be able to get. Well, everything is perfect. Uh, they, uh, well, the jury decided that we deserve the second place. Uh, and when I was asked to join the IOX project, I thought that everything would be pretty straightforward, but not so fast. As you all remember, quite a bit of economics that we do is purely theoretical. Uh, the open questions part, the test part, they're all theoretical. You just need to read a couple of textbooks. You require nearly zero real world experience. And only in the business cases, any real world experience becomes important. But here it goes a bit further. It goes to the part about implementation. As you may have heard, uh, the consultant firms uh, have generally have two parts of uh, their work. They have the solution to the issue the company presents to them and the implementation. The final part is that the implementation generally costs around nine times more, nine times more than the solution. So it's pretty important to actually implement your solution, not just uh, tell people that, well, you just should uh, decrease your costs and uh, raise revenue. That's it. Great idea. 
And now here is my million dollars. But no, for actually implementing your solution, you will get much more money. So that's important. Um, well, as a matter of fact, I'm not a very charitable person, really not a very charitable person. So for me, I had some private, uh, there, are, there were certain things that I actually gained from participating in the project. Just imagine how it will look in your resume. Oh yes, and I did some fundraising for an Olympia. Yes, we raised uh, a seven, seven million dollars. Yes, uh, just a bit of money. And yes, I have a great deal of experience working in an international team. I think that any employer will be really impressed with you if you have these lines in your resume. Well, at least that's uh, something that I think. Now, uh, another reason why I participate in the project is that uh, quite a few of my friends uh, have uh, presented uh, Russia in other international Olympiads, namely mathematics, informatics, and geography. And when they look at, uh, at me and I tell them that I, have, uh, that I present Russia in the economics Olympiad, they don't take me seriously. Because, uh, it's, well, it's not quite famous yet. I always have a very young Olympiad, but imagine what will happen if in 10 years, half the world participates in IO and you tell someone, oh yes, and I had the medal in IO. You know, this Olympiad that everyone knows and uh, this will uh, sound really great. So yes, here is another uh, reason why I participate so that uh, my achievement will sound even better in a decade. Yes, I think I don't sound like a very charitable person at all. So. What was my personal experience actually uh, participating in the project? First of all, we did some research and it turns out that it's uh, much more complicated than what we did for the case, much more detailed. And next, uh, we actually considered how we can contact the companies. So my personal part was again, uh, actually seeing what grant programs um, are available for IO. And uh, well, currently we're considering creating the nonprofit organization in America, which is again, harder than it looks, but it's a very important experience that will, is likely to help you in the future. I hope that you will join our team. I personally will be happy to see you. Thank you very much, Margarita. That was very great. Uh, now I think Alexander can talk about our next project, which is the winter challenge. Some of you might already know about it. Yeah, I have already uh, told you some stories from the Winter Challenge. And uh, this is a huge joint venture, actually, of uh, many people here, um, too. For example, Germano, Pat, uh, Julia, uh, and some of you have may maybe participated in the Open Track, or in the oh, Winter Challenge, I'm sorry. And, um, well, it was... Um, it was hard to do actually because we have had no um, no experience in creating something from scratch with the force of uh, with using the um, energy and resources available of the alumni of the people uh, in this community. We understand that um, not everyone has a lot of time to participate, so uh, it was challenging. Uh, but it was a very interesting process too, because we managed to create a lot of documentation around it, uh, some tasks to and to implement a very interesting system of the peer grading in the business cases uh, part of the challenge. And actually we uh, managed to gather around 600 people from all around the world. Um, so it was it was challenging and very interesting. I also think that um, some part of the team that uh, has been created in this process uh, will be developing uh, in its interconnections for a very long time from now. Because, for example, Chris has joined us, Christus Ben has joined us to help uh, to create those tasks. And well, now he became a jury member in the IO itself. Um, <laughs> I won't talk about the, uh, what, what else there was because, well, it will last for a very long time, as Pat said, <laughs> my speeches <laughs> can be a little bit longer <laughs> than they should be. Um, yeah, but um, I think that you should just come and try. Uh, we will be doing the same uh, winter challenge, but larger same thing but 
larger and better. <laughs> there, there is a joke in Russia about this. Um, and just, just come and try it out. You may pick some part of the job. You may try yourself as a manager uh, and etc. And I think we had a person who could share the experience from the winter challenge, if I'm correct about this. Uh, am I, Anna? Do we, do we have... Yep, you are, Anastasia. Yeah, hello everyone. Um, my name is Anastasia and I also a participant of IO uh, several years ago. And uh, in this year, it was my last chance to participate in winter challenge due to my age. And I understand that uh, um, besides university and other stuff, I want to participate because it is a really cool experience. So first, when I was a school student, I love uh, Riot Olympias because it is very interesting. You always uh, can find something new, just uh, solving new problems, um, new experience. And Winter Challenge is a cool opportunity uh, to try finance store from Olympiad business challenge and economic part and first uh, i wanted to recall my experience from IEO because it was amazing and we gathered some dream team for our case challenge and as margot mentioned we won the second place and i also was invited to fundraise project and it was very interesting and actually when you work on business case you get a very cool experience to find a new area you are not familiar with. And actually it is um, several skills you are trained during the participation. You first try to find information, try to present, try to analyze, try to give public speeches. And it's very valuable, especially when you have some feedback from it as we have in Winter Challenge. And that's why I encourage you to participate in any such opportunities because it is really fun. You're just solving good economics uh, problems as so I was amazed in my IEO that we have really cool tasks and the same we have in IEO challenge. Also, you have an opportunity to participate in business challenge. And as Margot mentioned that uh, it is a valuable experience because, uh, okay, in Russia, we have some case challenges, but it's some kind of specific for, for a program. And here it is more, I don't know, general, but yeah, I really love it. And actually, if you're interested in finance, it is also an opportunity to try yourself. And also, if you are younger than me, it is a good preparation for IEO itself. So you can go through all um, parts of the Olympiad and just have prepared to it. And yeah, it's good uh, stuff in terms of networking because you participate in a team and you communicate with guys who are interested in the same topics. And therefore, I really like this opportunity. And I'm sad a little bit because it was my last one, but you have a lot of more, a lot more time in the future. And please participate in any project by IEO because they are very cool. Thanks. Yeah, thank you very much, Anastasia. Now I think uh, we can discuss the open track. Oh, hello everyone. I'm Germano, executive member of the IEO since 2019, which means I am committed to the sustainable development of our dear Olympiad. And I've had the chance since last year to do it to do so concretely. So let me share my screen and tell you a little bit about all of this. I do apologize because I'm running the open track and here at the same time. So uh, can anyone tell me in the chat, what do you see in this picture? Do you have any idea? The three persons participating in a very important project. Yes, what else? That is correct, but that's not the whole truth. They yes, watching? Gustavo, Eleni, and Guillermo, but that's also correct, but not the whole truth. Are they watching at the dock? Are you alumni judging the open track? Oh, that's getting closer. This, my dear participants, is you. This is you tomorrow. 
any Olympiad is has a barricade between participants and organizers. And the opportunity of joining the open track is to jump this barricade and see what the world looks like from our side. There is always work to be done. Uh, and I'll show you, this is how the open track work group is organized. And look at this, there is always work to be done and there are always people that can do the work. Our, our job towards you is to join the tasks with the people. Have you ever felt like, I mean, you have just felt like this. You just presented your business cases yesterday and you're wondering, oh, why, why did the juror member judge me like this or like that? And why, the, why was that grader so strict? Or, have you ever felt these emotions? Now, do you know what, what the other side feels, how they, how they conduct their work? I've had alumni last year telling me, oh, wow, Germano, I had no idea judging tasks was so difficult, so tough. It, it, it takes effort to be fair. It takes effort to give, the, to give accurate results to people. So the open track, uh, I kind of skipped its description of what it is, but let me show you what, what participants see, what people potentially interested see. The most important thing it, is that it's parallel to the IEO. You, will, you as a participant, as a contestant, will get access to the same tasks, to this, almost to the same experience, to most of the same lectures from guests, and you'll be competing in a category of your own, and you don't have to have passed national selection. That's not relevant to you because you did pass national selection, you did complete your main track, but think of your classmates. There are five people per country who can participate in the main track. And the open track is open to everyone. And it's the same IEO. Of course, there are considerations to be made that you, uh, the open track doesn't get medals or trophies or anything, but the experience and the community is there. And that's, in the long run, the connections you make here are much more important than any medals or trophies. You're going to use your medal or trophy once or twice in your life but the connections can last for that whole life. It takes lots of work. It's very labor intensive and it's very highly qualified work, but we're very lucky as organizers because we've got a, we've got a pool of talent which uh, forms itself and that's you. Um, let me just get the Zoom interface out of my face here. As you can see, our work is divided into academics, that is people who design the academic, design the content and how it's run, design the experience of the, mostly the most important part of any Olympiad is the knowledge that transits within it. Communication, so if you're good at outreach, you're good at advertising, you're good at making interviews, making interesting media, beautiful art, you can find your place here. Operations, if you like logistics, you like running the show, running the machine, making sure everything is smooth so participants have their best experience, your place could be in operations. As I said, there is always much to be done and we run every year uh, with the same calendar as the IEO. A little bit of, the rounds are a little bit later for security reasons and this is a golden, a golden opportunity for you to get some of your personal, or some of your first work experience. In doing what you were just doing yesterday as a participant, you'll be doing as an organizer. You'll be mentored and, and uh, managed by very experienced people. Some of them who hold officer positions are actually alumni themselves. And some people are even alumni of National Olympiads without having been on the IO as a main track contestant, and that doesn't make it any worse. And speaking of not making it any worse, I'm very impressed and very happy that uh, the average results, not just average, uh, all the statistics for open track participants are almost the same, sometimes even higher uh, uh, within, the, within a very small margin of main track participants. So the, the amount of talent we're getting from the second channel of participation is wonderful. 
I'll just run across the timeline very fast, just so you can have idea, an idea of how much work is involved in, in making a kind of a sideshow to the main front. I can only imagine what the main front is like because I'm also involved in it. So there's always a lot to be done and we always need the people to do it. Uh, some of these kinds of work can even be paid and sometimes in currency, sometimes in experience, sometimes in connections. And the key word here is professionalism. We're, we're here to make you professions, professionals and to give you the opportunity to see the Olympiad from the other side and work the Olympiad from the other side. So thank you. Yeah, thank you very much for that inspiring speech, Dermona. I hope more participants will be joining the open track. And now, uh, last but not least, Alexander will tell us about the essay challenge. Yeah, this is the very uh, small part of the talk today because uh, actually the whole idea of the um, say challenges, I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm just laughing about the answer in the chat. I, I wanted to say that you duck, but still, uh, sometimes you head about it, yeah. <laughs> um, the essay challenge ID was proposed on the April uh, economics conference in the HSC, uh, and uh, it was built around uh, some of our team leaders already uh, being involved into such uh, things. And um, it should be a very interesting process because uh, we would like to ask um, people from all around the world to write on some global themes. And uh, I suppose that in those essays, we will be learning a lot about uh, what happens around this world and um, to to make it happen to make it real it actually will need uh, a lot of preparation because the hardest thing in this it sounds easy uh, what's what's so difficult and uh, tell everyone the task and just receive the essay but the hard task is how do you grade an essay there is no uh, countable um numbers that you could compare and tell us that well this number is correct and this is not it's not mathematics uh it's like a, it's literature so how can you grade a, a poem it's very hard question and it's also a very hard question uh to be understood by those people who are grading this because um if i say um, I like something, uh, what do you think about this? It might be that I like, I don't know, drinking cola, for example, for it's sweet. Or maybe I uh, meant, yeah, like this, uh, it would refer to you then maybe more uh, about the cola. Um, maybe it, it was referred to, to Yuli herself. I, I like Yuli, she's doing a great job. Or maybe it would refer to some kind of uh, some kind of uh, state I'm in. Like I like the world I'm living in. So the one simple word could be understood differently. I'm sorry I haven't prepared many examples of this, but I think you got the point. And um, we need to create some kind of parameters, grading parameters that would be understandable to everyone, that would be understood uh, in the same way for everyone. And uh, for this, we need you. We need the most talented, the very uh, smart people that have gathered here. So we need your help. Also, there will be a lot of things to be done, like inviting you, inviting people to this, inviting uh, countries to this, inviting partners to this, helping to participate at all, creating the system of the peer grading uh, for it hasn't been actually done, as I think, uh, in such a scale to peer grade 
a huge number of essays. It's challenging too. Um, there will be also a number of projects that we haven't stated here yet, like uh, the business cases challenge uh, that will need the same things like the essay uh, challenge. Uh, well, close to the same uh, things. And we invite you to, to participate in it too. Uh, and also, there will be one more interesting thing uh, to be involved in is enlarging the Olympiad. Uh, this project has not been stated yet, um, and we have not created a team for this yet, and we have not talked between each other about this yet. So this is the first time I'm speaking about it aloud, but uh, everyone here, I think, already thought uh, about it that we need you to help us to grow, to invite new countries, to help those countries to build their own national Olympiads, to develop the economics education in there. Um, not in, in some countries, there is no economics at all. You might be from one of those. No, no economics, I mean, no economics education, of course. <laughs> Julia, thank you. <laughs> in schools. Yeah. Mm. So, yeah, that's basically it. Join the group in Telegram and uh, say aloud if you wish to to participate. If you wish to to join us. If you wish to participate in any of the projects, or maybe if you'd like to uh, to make something of your own. I know that some uh, some alarm of ours uh, has been creating like a football team, a uh, gaming, uh, online gaming teams, etc. So there are many things to be done and interesting things. Thank you. I think we will be ending this meeting if you have any questions or suggestions speak up uh, you may state it in the chat while we give you some time for this i will be saying my gratitude to the people involved in this meeting um, thank you all thank you a lot thank but thank you for creating the toastmasters and helping us to uh, to to be better in in our speeches to to develop this more uh germano health thank you a lot for well for everything you have been involved in i don't know i don't know the thing that you have not been involved actually can't remember now i have long tentacles yeah and we still have a duel to, <laughs> to do <laughs> yeah I'd rather, I'd rather take a hike okay yeah agreed uh, Anna, thank you for joining us. Thank you for uh, for, for starting in this, uh, and I hope we, we will become a great part uh, of this team uh, with some time. Uh, we already uh, feel the uh, the results uh, of your involvement here too. Uh, Julia, thank you a lot for being with us i don't know the thing that would be actually going on uh, if, if you wasn't with us uh, she's the most important person here uh, so please um, yeah yeah please lo love her as we do <laughs> yeah. oh uh, there's a question in the chat. Are there any time frames to the participants? I think we should mention. Uh, okay. Um, most of the projects are uh, time based, but repeated. So winter challenge happens in the winter, as you might have supposed. Uh, the open track happens uh, during the IO, as you have guessed already, I think. And uh, other projects will be decided on, but the business cases challenge and the essay challenge should be somewhere in between those two. So it's autumn and uh, spring. And um, well, the Toastmasters is all year 
all around the year. So uh, we join in someone can't uh, get to one of or a couple of meetings, doesn't matter. The Toastmasters will go on throughout the year and we will get to know each other better and better. As well as the fundraising. As well as fundraising. Yeah. And better and better and better. <laughs> yeah, so glad to see you all here. Um, thank you guys for uh, for helping us to present the projects uh, that you have participated in. Um, Margot, Ekaterina, Sahil. Sahil, yeah, I can't see him, some why, I don't know why, but yeah, I, I have just rushed through the screen, found familiar uh, faces. <laughs> um, yeah, I think that that will be, join us, write to us, you can find us in the chats, in anywhere. Don't hesitate to write to me, to Yulia, to Anna. We would like to create a very interesting community around this. Thank you for joining. See you. Yeah, thank you everybody for coming. See thank you. you. Bye. Thank you.